And now you know what withholdeth, that he might be revealed in his time. There's a specific time he's going to be revealed in flesh. Right now, he's in mystery form. You say, what does that mean? That means there's a... The same way we have Christ in us, the hope of glory, people have the Antichrist in them. The recompensation of damnation and tribulation to their ultimate destruction. For these things, the wrath of God comes upon the children of disobedience. We're going to look at this. Right now, he's in mystery form. That mystery form, John tells you, is a spiritual form. That spirit of Antichrist. Whereof ye have heard that it should come, hadn't come yet, fully, but it's now already is in the world. It's right there. This spirit is a spirit that operates within children of disobedience. Wherein in time past, before you got saved, this was you. You walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit, singular spirit, guys. They don't have multiple spirits. It's one spirit that works in the children of disobedience. He said, who's the children of disobedience? Well, by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. You're a child of Adam is what he's saying. And there's one singular spirit that works in the children of Adam. And what, what does it work? It works all manner of evilness, unrighteousness. Romans chapter 1 told you that. This is, this is Adam's image. Right here, Titus chapter 3, verse 3. You know, people talk about image, they think like the way somebody looks or something. Christ said, judge not according to the appearance to judge righteous judgment. He's looking here. The image of God comes from here. Same thing about this image here. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving divers' lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. Right? Paul said in Colossians 3, Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence and covetousness, which is idolatry, for which things sake the wrath of God cometh upon who? And that same, that Singular spirit works in them. That's right. What's happening? He's manifesting that image. That's right. and that mystery of iniquity. Man's participation in these things, natural man, is an act of denial that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. Amen. You say, what do you mean? Look what John said here. Listen, man, I don't care if it's 1 John. You know, he's quoting 1 John. I don't care if Bartholomew wrote this. This is the Bible, guys. Amen. That's right. He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might what? You know the Apostle Paul said the same thing? Romans chapter 8. You know what's wrong with people? I don't read their Bible. That's the problem. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. That's why he was manifested. To destroy the works of the devil. The works of the devil is right there. Not sins, but the nature of sin. Right? That Adam inherited when he fell. So the act of denial of man, that Christ has come in the flesh to destroy the works of the devil, <coughs> has the fruits of all unrighteousness, of which Paul said they are worthy of death. Romans chapter 1. They deny that Christ has come in the flesh. That means they hate God. You know what God said about that in Proverbs 8? He that sins against me wrongs, uh, wrongeth his own soul. All that hate me love death. They love it. This man of sin is a spirit that is working within the children of disobedience today, guys. And they're joined together as members in a body. Just like we are. Look what look, they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but what? They're joined. They like it when people commit sin. Look at Psalm chapter 10 again. Look at verse 2. Let me show you something. Let 
We just read it, but I, I left out a part on the slide. Look at Psalm 10 too. The wicked in his pride doth persecute the poor. Let them. Who's the them? There ain't no them in that whole chapter. You say, what are you talking about? One singular spirit is being worked out in multiple members. The same way the Spirit of God works in every single one of us to make us compact through the righteousness of God, that same spirit that works in the children of disobedience is making them come compact through unrighteousness, through iniquity, the mystery of iniquity. That's what it is. And when he comes in bodily form, those who have been joined to him through that spirit or that mystery of iniquity will worship him. It's Revelation 13. All the world wondered after the beast and said, who is able to make war against the beast? And they worshipped him. And they took his mark in the next chapter. You say, what's their, what's their end? Lake of fire. That's what it is. Now Adam lost this image of godliness. The image of God. God came to restore that image. So he became man. Now like I said, the devil's a copycat, right? He's a creature... Therefore, he cannot create anything of himself. The only thing he can do is take what God has done in creation and pervert it and claim it as truth. That's what he does. That's why people believe lies, because there's elements of truth to it. You talk about Mormonism, right? They talk about, you know, they believe they're going to be gods of planets and stuff. Well, that's not too far off. I mean, we're going to be ruling in the heavenly places, guys. You know, Psalm 82 talks about gods. See, they have an element of truth, but they, they're, it's built on a lie. You know, the devil's not... A, a lie is not just something that's way off base, guys. It's deceptive. <laughs> you say, why is there a mystery of iniquity? Because this. Because God did something. Every time God does something, Satan has to do something. And then God, whenever he does something, he sets Satan back about... 15 steps and he has to catch up. Without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on the world, received up in the glory. This is the side by side of the two mysteries here. God was manifest, Satan revealed in the flesh. Justified, in the Spirit, consume with it. Second Thessalonians. Scene of angels, scene of men, Isaiah 14, 16. Pharisees loved to be seen of men. Well, you know what? Their damnation will be that too. Preaching on the Gentiles operates naturally through the Gentiles. Ephesians chapter 2. We just read it. Believed on in the world, so is that one. Revelation 13, received up in the glory, cast in eternal damnation. But it's there. Just as much as there's a mystery of godliness here, which is the Christ, the fullness of Christ, Christ's body, here's the Antichrist body. Mystery of iniquity. It's there. Now the thing is, Christ came, manifested himself in flesh, and redeemed us from that iniquity right there.